Welcome to all. Uh, we will uh, see in this session how to implement uh, proactive management uh, for a virtual environment uh, using the uh, Pancast uh, solution. I am uh, Andrea Mauro. I'm a VCDX, uh, I'm a V expert. I start to work with uh, VMware uh, ESX when it was called ESX uh, 2.5. And uh, about uh, Runnecast, I start, uh, I, I saw the born of this company, I know one of the, of the founder, and uh, I see all uh, the history of uh, this company, very, very pretty nice uh, grow for uh, a startup uh, that uh, was not started in the Silicon Valley. What will be about uh, this session? Uh, is most like uh, how improve uh, your uh, operational in uh, especially for a virtualized environment are i'm more likely and uh, an old uh, age <laughs> counts and all uh, it infrastructure guy but uh, of course um, not uh, <clears throat> all the infrastructure are uh, anymore on premises, but somewhere there, there is an infrastructure. So why you should care about uh, proactive management? What is the definition for proactive uh, management? I found this uh, pretty nice uh, definition that uh, is more related uh, on uh, what you know if you know some kind of risks, if you know some uh, potentially uh, failure or uh, aspect that you have to check. And uh, somehow, maybe through automation or uh, different way, decrease the, uh, the impact that uh, those risks can have on your business because uh, is more likely related to provide service provide service uh, inside maybe your SLA or uh, what is your business requirement and uh, not only make all just uh, running and uh, working because uh, it, the infrastructure itself can be running, uh, I don't say correctly, but apparently correctly, but maybe your services uh, may be slow, maybe have uh, some uh, performance uh, degradation or uh, some potential uh, weakness uh, that you have to found. And uh, a proactive uh, management uh, can help in this. Because, uh, because you have to choose uh, a proactive management uh, isn't already provided by your hardware vendor or your cloud, uh, public cloud uh, providers, uh, in most cases, yes, but for example, uh, for uh, hardware vendor, it's true that uh, some of them uh, provide, uh, I have to say also good uh, proactive management, uh, for example, for uh, storage infrastructure, but uh, is mostly related to the hardware part, uh, to the storage part, maybe to the network part, uh, or just to the core of, of the infrastructure but there is also the software stack that you have to, to manage. We saw in, uh, in the last uh, two years uh, that companies like uh, HPA or uh, Dell, MC, Dell Technologies uh, have uh, also moved to a cloud model uh, approach where you can have a service uh, also on premises uh, and uh, somehow managed by a proactive management uh, by the provider, in this case, the hardware vendor provider, or other company like uh, AWS that uh, can provide uh, outpost uh, to bring uh, inside your, uh, your company uh, a cloud-based model uh, solution. But uh, of course, uh, most of them are, uh, are using uh, an approach like a uh, managed service uh, approach uh, or uh, cloud model service, uh, but not necessary if they are focused on your, uh, uh, your business, uh, your services, 
your SLE and uh, provide uh, a full overview of uh, uh, the insight that you need to uh, better understood if uh, your infrastructure, if your services are working correctly. More likely, a proactive management is uh, to be more focused on prevent instead of uh, react or uh, try to fix the problem after the problem uh, occurs. And uh, is, uh, it could be really interesting uh, to better understood your uh, infrastructure, your uh, services, uh, your infrastructure on-premises or uh, hybrid or uh, just public infrastructure, but uh, better understanding to see what can be the potential uh, issue, bottleneck uh, or uh, weakness or uh, your solution. And uh, I have to say that the proactive management can really help uh, to simplify the troubleshooting part because uh, you can have uh, still a problem. But uh, with a uh, proactive management, uh, you can better understand why the problem occurs uh, and in this way, really simplify the troubleshooting part. It's more like to say it's better proactive uh, than a reactive approach, but uh, to be honest, uh, uh, both approaches can fail. If you remember uh, an old uh, series uh, uh, that was called A-Team, uh, John uh, Hannibal Smith was uh, usually make really good plans, uh, complicated plans, uh, but most of them fails <laughs> during uh, uh, the execution. And this can also be in a proactive uh, uh, approach because uh, you see what uh, was happened uh, to Facebook uh, some weeks ago. They probably have a good proactive uh, uh, implementation, uh, but DNS, uh, can uh, not work correctly. And we saw the same uh, some years ago with uh, Azure, uh, with certificates. Uh, uh, problem can occur and uh, nothing is uh, totally uh, failless. Uh, and uh, you have to probably use both of them and maybe balance uh, how be proactive, but also be reactive when is need, when the proactive approach fails. I have to say something more like to uh, be more adaptive, but uh, is a mix of uh, both of them because remember that uh, each approach can fail. And um, how can you become more reactive or improve the proactive part to be more reactive? Basically, you have to start from your data, analyze them, uh, be sure uh, that uh, they can provide uh, good insights uh, and uh, search for no patterns. Because uh, as we said before, uh, the definition of uh, proactive is something like, uh, you know what can happen and uh, you try to avoid before it happens. But, uh, is more like uh, related to define some potential pattern and uh, uh, be prepared before uh, some threshold occurs or uh, some events occurs or more likely this, but things changes. Uh, and uh, if you want a uh, better uh, reactive way, you can use dynamic threshold uh, or uh, machine learning analysis uh, or something more uh, predictive instead of uh, reactive. But uh, again, a mix of them can be a good way. Then you have to bring uh, all the results uh, visible in uh, an operational easy way, because uh, in uh, most company, the technical support of uh, who is uh, carrying uh, who takes care about the services uh, works correctly, 
they are uh, more likely a support team that uh, not necessarily can go in deep uh, to understand uh, what can be a problem, but they have they need some dashboard to see what is happen and uh, react and uh, uh, be prepared. Also, try to adopt uh, compliance uh, can be a good way to, I don't say, uh, go totally in a proactive way, but to better try to design and uh, define your uh, your infrastructure your services and so on also for a security point of view for example and of course uh, somehow you have to make some kind of uh, remediation because uh, you have some uh, situation where maybe they are not optimal uh, they, they you have to change something uh, in an automated way or uh, in a manual way, but of course, uh, to be more proactive, uh, automated way can be more interesting. Uh, and uh, if you make some changes, uh, you have to make those changes uh, visible and uh, trackable because uh, usually, I don't say every time, but uh, if a problem occurs, uh, you can check, you can correlate uh, all the events, uh, but also the change tracking uh, of uh, what uh, what has changed because uh, maybe it's just one change that uh, has uh, make some uh, some problem. Like for example, the certificate uh, change uh, that have, uh, uh, locked the uh, Azure for uh, several hours uh, some uh, years ago. Of course, uh, you can have uh, some proactive tools that can uh, really help uh, in what uh, you have to do. For example, uh, VMware is pushing a lot uh, in the virtualize operation tool uh, to help uh, you um, uh, data analysis and uh, dynamic threshold and uh, also forecast uh, to be more uh, predictive also. But there is uh, a service that uh, most uh, customer already have, already are paying for it, but maybe are not using it. This uh, can be really interesting because uh, VMware Skyline can provide some good insights. Is uh, a complementary part of uh, uh, operation because uh, operation is more like to check your data constantly. Skyline is just about uh, check uh, your configuration uh, day by day and uh, see if uh, uh, match, uh, for example, uh, recommended practice or uh, some, uh, some faults can be found, uh, but uh, can be an interesting uh, solution. Of course, there is a Runcast analyzer and uh, I will be more focused on this, uh, but um, there are a lot of di different products, maybe, one single product cannot uh, uh, make all uh, what you need for uh, a full uh, proactive uh, model. Maybe you have to combine uh, a few products uh, to, to better uh, manage uh, your environment in a, a better way. There are also some uh, solutions integrated in vSphere uh, like, for example, Skyline as uh, an integrated part uh, that in integrated in VooCenter server that is called Skyline Health, uh, started with uh, vSAN, that was uh, a good tool for uh, somehow validate your uh, cluster. Now, as some interesting feature also for uh, non vSAN clusters, but uh, is uh, very limited uh, compared to the uh, SaaS uh, solution, uh, uh, the VMware Skyline full SaaS solution. There are also some uh, services uh, in uh, the Sphere cluster that uh, are called uh, proactive, but uh, to be honest, uh, both uh, proactive HA and proactive DRS, uh, they rely on uh, external tools. Uh, that uh, 
those external tools are really proactive. For example, proactive DRS just use VMware virtualized operation data to somehow uh, predict uh, what uh, VRS should do. <clears throat> but you need VRLIZE operation. And uh, the proactive uh, engine is inside VRLIZE operation. Proactive HA uh, rely on uh, hardware vendors, uh, uh, tools uh, like uh, uh, tools from uh, uh, Dell or uh, HP for uh, analyze your hardware data and uh, check if, for example, uh, drive is uh, faulting soon or uh, memory has uh, some errors uh, or those kind of uh, stuff that can help to prevent uh, an hardware failure. Again, vCenter just use the, those data to uh, make some move, in this case, uh, put uh, the host uh, in uh, a state that is called quarantine, more likely a maintenance mode. And uh, this can help to be more proactive, but uh, you rely on an external service. About Renacast, uh, the visibility is uh, very interesting because you have uh, a good dashboard I have to say that the dashboard for uh, the cloud services are more interesting, are uh, more, uh, more detailed, but uh, you have a lot of data. And uh, by the way, I don't know if uh, all of you already know, but you can just ask for a demo. This page is just, just the demo version because it's easy to make uh, your lab, but uh, it's not so easy to have a lot of number or uh, have a long history to analyze, uh, to just uh, drill down uh, in different events uh, and uh, to have uh, good data to, to make practice. Uh, uh, the, the demo version is very interesting. As you see here, uh, the dashboard for uh, a typical uh, uh, virtualized infrastructure is uh, already interesting. I just, uh, in the slide deck, uh, put the first part, but you see the history that can also help. The different uh, area where you have different uh, problem, but uh, is a very, very powerful tool, as I have to say. Of course, you can just... Uh, browse uh, your uh, different infrastructure. In this case, maybe the demo is uh, quite slow, but the nice of the demo is that uh, in a few seconds, you can access those data. And uh, to see that uh, for uh, cloud, you have uh, more, uh, more data or uh, you can drill down different type of uh, object. Also, you can have uh, a dashboard that can aggregate uh, different uh, Runcast analyzer, and this can be very interesting for large environment or mixed environment, uh, where uh, you have a uh, different uh, engine uh, um, worldwide uh, spread, uh, and uh, you need uh, to analyze all, all those data. So visibility is uh, first uh, step that uh, you have to, you is must have that you, you need to better understand uh, how it's working. Of course, uh, the first step was the analyzer part, but uh, as I said, uh, all those tools uh, have uh, some good uh, analytics, uh, uh, some good uh, engine to analyze your data, to collect, of course, and analyze your data. Another aspect that you have to, to think about uh, is uh, how bring this visibility in other management tools? Because uh, this can be mostly related for uh, the cloud, uh, the virtualized part, uh, and uh, already Runcast can analyze uh, AWS, uh, Azure, uh, uh, vSphere environments, uh, Hyper-V environments, uh, multiple uh, platform but there is still probably in your company a physical part 
uh, for example, storages uh, or uh, network uh, or uh, balancer, uh, firewall. Uh, and uh, maybe you already have a dashboard. Or you already have, uh, for example, a ticket management solution, or you already have a log analyzer. So be able to integrate uh, some of uh, the data in uh, a single tool, maybe for uh, one specific uh, needs, uh, logging or ticket management or what else can be very interesting. There are different plugins in this case are just uh, uh, telling about uh, the ServiceNow plugin for uh, Runcast because ServiceNow is a growing uh, solution adopted by more and more companies. But of course, there are also other solutions like for log analysis, Splunk, and so on. Then you have to think about uh, compliance just uh, as a model to be, I don't say prepared, but uh, be more, uh, uh, more focused on uh, what you want, what you are expecting uh, from your solution. Compliance are just uh, a desired state uh, somehow, but not necessary, are just following best practice, not necessary, but somehow, is uh, they are they can start from there or validated design uh, or uh, just be compliance for uh, for example for hardware compatibility list or for software interoperability matrix uh, but uh, if you think about compliance uh, you probably think mostly on security compliance but as i said compliance are a lot of different compliance in this case uh, Runicast can bring a different point of view for, uh, for example, compatibility. For compatibility, you can have uh, a match on uh, the hardware compatibility list, uh, but more important, uh, you can have uh, a simulator to uh, better understand what will happen if you make some upgrade, for example, for your infrastructure. Some of the features are uh, already in the new version of vSphere 7, but uh, I have to say that uh, for planning uh, and for uh, validation, uh, for uh, Runcast uh, still uh, have a good, uh, good engine for, uh, for this task. Of course, there is the security part and uh, there was already a session uh, before uh, on the security part, so I just uh, uh, skip because the, the previous session was very, very good. And uh, I invite you to, if you haven't followed it, to see the registration. But uh, you can match uh, a different type of uh, security guideline. And uh, this is very interesting. As you probably saw uh, in the previous session, you can also remediate because, as I said, the, if you found a problem, like a security problem, but can be every type of problem, maybe you want to, to fix it. And uh, remediation is something possible in Runicast in a different way uh, in, the, in the keynote, uh, in the introduction. Uh, you already heard about uh, script, PowerShell script, or Ansible playbooks. And it's very, very easy, honestly, because uh, you can find the problem. Not all issues are fixable, are uh, automatically re uh, can have a remediation, because some, sometimes the data are more related to design or uh, some aspect that uh, you have to think about. and. Uh, try to found a better approach or a better design or what else. But in some cases, you have a small error uh, near the issue. And uh, in, in this way, you can easily see the PowerClean uh, script if you want, or just click on the Ansible part and uh, take the Ansible playbook. 
And uh, this is an interesting way also to better understand uh, those kind of tools that can uh, really, really help uh, in uh, automation, in, um, in define uh, also how you do, you make changes in your environment to be trackable because if you use a script or a playbook or what else, uh, you can just uh, cut and paste the script uh, in the documentation and say, okay, I've done this and uh, it's just part of the documentation. Or uh, with Ansible, you can uh, go in uh, a desired state model and uh, try to every time stay in this uh, desired state model. Of course, you can automate uh, those, uh, those remediation, for example, uh, using the VRO plugin, but there are different uh, ways. Uh, Runcast uh, has also API, and uh, you can uh, integrate uh, API with other uh, tools and uh, make uh, the flow that you need. But, VRO plugin uh, is uh, a common way to make uh, your uh, workflow needed for uh, automatically remediation for security, but not only for security. Also, you can have some intrinsic compliance. Uh, for example, uh, by default, uh, as you saw probably the what was called in the past uh, the hardening guide for uh, vSphere now is uh, called in a different way, but if you check uh, all the steps uh, and uh, you see the columns about uh, is already applied, is, is a default option, you probably saw that uh, most of, uh, for example, the VM security uh, tuning are mainly by default. This uh, is very important, is the reason why uh, for example, now we use uh, Vmotion uh, in opportunistic way because uh, it is uh, from uh, 6.5 by default uh, encrypted. And so for different aspect. You can also go to reach uh, some kind of compliance by baseline. You probably know host profiles, for example, or uh, lifecycle manager can uh, work with uh, baseline, but it's more interesting uh, try to found the compliance by, by a desired state. I, I, I like uh, using Ansible or other tools uh, that work in this way, but also in uh, VooCenter, the, the new lifecycle manager can work by image and uh, try to have uh, a desired state that is an image with all the right drivers and uh, uh, firmwares and so on. And, apply this uh, to your system. And of course, I'll try to enforce and continuous check uh, your remediation and so on. There is an interesting trend uh, called the compliance as code, mostly related to DevOps, uh, DevSecOps, uh, DevOpsSec, uh, as we want to call, but um, <clears throat> is a very interesting uh, trend uh, that uh, especially for security, maybe you have to, to check. Then, if you make some changes, we have also to, cha to track uh, all these changes. Uh, and uh, from this point of view, the configuration vault from Runacast uh, is a powerful way to track uh, all those changes because uh, you can see what uh, has changed, when, uh, have also an historical view for all the changes because uh, as i said before uh, those can be one reason why maybe your uh, proactive uh, solution doesn't work and uh, other aspect to consider there can be some complexity in some tools uh, but uh, if you saw for example runcast is very easy to deploy but also to upgrade uh, or update uh, you can have some uh, SaaS uh, solution, uh, but uh, in those cases, uh, probably you have uh, the problem on where are stored your data. So not necessarily a SaaS model can be uh, applicable for all the companies. And of course, it's just uh, a long journey because uh, moving uh, 
to reactive to a more proactive uh, and maybe also a little uh, predictive uh, is just uh, a journey with this uh, i already finished my session and uh, i don't uh, there are some chat okay good i don't see any open question in any case uh, you can find my Twitter handle and uh, just uh, send me a note uh, or a question. Thank you very much for uh, your time and uh, enjoy the rest of the day.